And now let's see who Baba Yaga really is. Curator Vronsky? Exactly. He was using Baba Yaga's house to smuggle stolen Fabergé eggs into the country. That's right. I was going to sell them on the black market. Finally, I was to be a rich capitalist with all my loot. I had it planned perfectly. Before becoming a museum curator, I spent many years in Spetsnaz, Soviet Special Forces. This allowed me to make modifications on the house using what I could find on the ship. I even put a remote control in my walking stick to move the house. I needed to get assistant curator Anna Arkadyevna out of the way before she became suspicious of my plan. I tied her up and kept her prisoner in the house, while I donned the Baba Yaga costume and used a voice modulator to frighten away the curious. But when one of the legs was damaged, I had to alter the plan. But you brats kept interrupting my repair of the legs. I could not leave any of my precious eggs behind. They were too many. I needed a house to carry them all. I would have gotten away with it, too, if it wasn't for you decadent bourgeois teenagers and your slobbering, democracy-loving dog. And now let's see who Crybaby Clown really is. Baylor Hotner? That's Reitner. Actor, humanitarian, guy with amazingly super awesome abs. I came here to Crystal Cove to research the part of a crazed clown for my upcoming blockbuster movie, The Night the Clown Cried. It was gonna be my Oscar. Using my knowledge of Hollywood makeup and effects and a trick buggy I stole from the back lot, I honed my crazed clown performance to perfection. Then I built my entourage. A therapist, a hairdresser, a plastic surgeon, and a publicist. Everything I needed to be a great actor. Of course, I put tracking chips in all of them because you have to know where your posse is at all times. I even had an innocent small-town girl that would make me look like the nicest guy. I had it all! And I would have been the world's greatest Hollywood thespian, too, if it hadn't have been for you small-town scene-stealers. I confess! I did it! I did it! I'm the Dreamweaver! Busted! How... How did you know? In all the dreams, the Dreamweaver held his orb in his left hand. But when we looked at everybody else, guess what? They're all righties. You're the only lefty in the bunch. This type of light bulb is used to stimulate REM sleep. You use them to create this, a dream machine, which allowed you to project yourself into another person's dreams and manipulate them. It cost you millions of dollars, which you loaned yourself from your own bank. Then you drove your car into your bank, blowing it up to cover your tracks. But the only thing we don't know is why. It was all your fault. Huh? Horbert, the Dreamweaver raises his orb, ready to cast his smiting spell. Make a saving throw. The Dreamweaver laughs as he casts your broken, lifeless, elven body into the eternal abyss. No! I loved that elf. I loved him more than my own children! And you took him away from me! You were all part of it! So I vowed to take away the things you all loved! And I would have gotten away with it too if it weren't for you... You... Role-playing nerds! Where's my Nova? Hold on. A, a monkey? monkey? That's huh? right. My monkey. Nobody moves. Or a dog gets it. Nova! Mr. Fussbuster, please, don't hurt Nova. Why are you doing this? It all started back when I was a sailor working the trade boats in Indonesia. I learned you could train a monkey to steal. So that's just what I did. I trained Roberto using bells and used him to build up my fortune. When I rang a bell, he would start taking valuable objects. But he became bell crazy. Started stealing bells, too. He drove me insane! 
all of those bells. And then he not only brought home the bells, but whatever were attached to them. You don't know how many cats and cows and hunchbacks he brought home with him. But it was all worth it, as we were just about to steal the 500-year-old cheese you have in your hand. 500-year-old cheese? Yes, it was made right here in Crystal Cove by a master Spanish cheesemaker. It's priceless. And with its theft, I could have finally retired to the Netherlands, where they really enjoy cheese properly. Let's see who's really behind all this junk. I don't get it. Wait for it. We discovered the strange paralysis of Eco, Cleo, and Worker Number 1 had been caused by a rare strand of brewer's yeast, used only in Bavaria. That allowed us to reverse the effect. These guys had been frozen to recreate a picture by the famous Bavarian artist Albrecht von Kartoffelkopf, so we knew we were looking for someone German. I, I still don't get it. Here's why, Randy Warsaw. The real culprit is Butch Burbanks. Fine, you got me. But don't expect my introspective personality to register guilt. His real name is Hans von Schonemgruber. Before Butch joined Sunday Around Noonish, he released an album of classical accordion music. It reached number one in the Bavarian hit parade, but soon fizzled. Using powerful electromagnets and his expert knowledge of musical instruments, Butch was able to control your junk sculpture and make it attack you. The only thing we don't know is why. All right, look, I did it for art. That can't be right, can it? Okay, that's a lie. The truth is, I hated what you made me into. All I ever wanted to do was play polkas in a Bavarian oompa band. A beautiful dream that I lived until I came to work for you, Randy Warsaw. You changed me. You transformed me. Molded me into a, a dark band leader, playing and singing horrible intellectual music. You took everything from me, and I wanted to make you pay. Pay! And I would have gotten away with it too if it wasn't for you meddling polka haters. And now let's see who he really is. Evalo. Well, what do you know? He really was the most obvious suspect. <laughs> who would have guessed? Evalo was stealing natural gas from the Crystal Cove Gas Company. Yes, that is right. I did it. I, Count Evalo von Meenskrieg developed a perfectly evil plan and used my position as gravedigger to cover my activities. But the crowds from the mayor's movie night meant someone might notice what I was up to. I had to scare them off. Thus, my genius evil plan of the graveyard pool was born. Unfortunately, the frame broiling grill was incredibly dangerous so close to my gas lines. I had to stop it. Which led to my capture. Sadly, I the evil Count Ivalo von Minskrieg would have gotten away with it too. If it wasn't for the sheriff and his American style barbecue. There's that smell again. Of course. Hot dog water. Marcy, wait! Hello, Thelma. Why would you. Wait. Of course. Mr. E, you're still working for him. But you couldn't outwit the captain's traps without Fred. That's right. So humiliating to have to rely on a guy. I repurposed my old manticore outfit and super helium technology to create the Dark Lilith disguise. Then I lured Gary and Ethan here by falsely telling them professional soccer players worked their calf muscles on Mount Diablo. I knew Fred would talk you guys into investigating what happened to them. Then, Fred could spring the traps, and I could get the peace. <sighs> but you're a hard girl to fool, V. I'm glad you recognized me. Me too. So, how's this gonna end? Here. Friendship should always come first, and... Well, you're the only friend. I've ever had. What about Mr. E? He'll hunt you down and destroy you. He'll have to catch me first. See you around, Velma Dinkley. Gary and Ethan. Oh, how did you know? Yeah, we were like totally sneaky. Not so totally, I'm afraid. The odd indentations in Hebediagram's footprints turned out to be soccer cleat marks. Gary's chat video was pre-recorded. I hacked your laptop and found the original recordings. 
Two missing costumes meant there could be two Hebediah Grimm's. But like worst of all, you guys try to frame Dougal McGinnis by putting a yearbook on his porch. Ethan's yearbook! So judge that, you losers. Booyah! Who wants to judge me now, huh? Who? You want to judge me? You? In your face! Yeah! And Luke! That doesn't make any sense. You seem like the nicest guy. Why, Dan? Why? It's this place. I can't take it. I've been here since I was born. My family has been caretakers of the Burlington Mansion and then the Burlington Library for generations. I was born here. Been here every day of my life. All alone up here on this mountain tending this darn library. But it always seems to be snowing and I could never get warm. Never! I hate the cold. I hate the snow. But the library could never be closed. I never got a vacation. Not one. I found out about the terror word when I accidentally burned some. So I decided to use it to scare away anyone and everyone that came here. So eventually, no one would come anymore, and I could close the place forever, and go someplace warm! And I would have done it too, been somewhere warm by now, if it wasn't for you meddling snowbound brats. That makes four groups. My guess? There's more. Almost as if this has all happened before. Exactly right, Mr. Reincorporated. Professor Pericles! Ah, lovely. I see you have met what's left of Frau Gluck. I met Frau Gluck in Bavaria in the 1930s. She discovered the missionaries possessed the fifth and the sixth pieces of the planispheric disk. She built this lab and a host of robots to aid her search for the pieces. I finally found this lab and continued the Frau's work, building a legion of her Kriegsstaffer bots to retrieve the pieces for me. My holographic masquerade as Frau Glück bought my bots all the time they needed. And I would have gotten away with eliminating Cassidy if it weren't for you meddling kids. Now it's time to see who the Scare Bear really is. Vincent Furman? That's right. And Furman isn't my real name. It's Hairmore. Why did you change it? Isn't it obvious, man? Hairmore would give me away as a Scare Bear. I mean, duh. All I wanted was to expose Destroido for the sick. Soul-destroying evil that it is. Destroido ruins lives and pays the victims to keep quiet. Well, this is one victim who won't remain quiet any longer. How are you a victim? You look fine. Do I? Pretty scarlet-headed temptress. What if I told you that I am not, in fact, wearing a bear suit, but I'm covered completely in animal hair? Except for your face? It would be covered too. Square-jawed, handsome young hero. If I didn't have to shave every few hours just to maintain my non-hero suit appearance. You see... I purchased a bottle of gentle rainflower body wash for men. A heavenly scent designed to bring the ladies running. What I didn't know was that the company Musky Farms is a division of Destroido, and that there's a side effect. When I contacted Destroido about their product turning me into a hairy, bare man, the company acted as if what had happened to me was nothing. They tried to pay me off. Destroido ruined my life. So, I was determined to find evidence that their body wash was toxic. I got the job as head of security and created the Scare Bear suit out of taxidermy bear parts. I'm particularly proud of the claws, which I purchased from a school for gifted children. I discovered that Gentle Rainflower was originally marketed as a long growth fertilizer that was so toxic it destroyed an entire town. They didn't even change the formula. I was in the process of uploading the incriminating files to my website when you kids broke into my lab. My plan was to finally expose Destroido tonight at their own charity ball. I wanted to show the entire world what they had done, and I would have gotten away with it too. If it wasn't for you meddling, mutant, animal-hating kids. Now, let's see who Krampus really is. Charlie the Haunted Robot? Like what? That doesn't make sense. Charlie isn't human, so that means someone must be controlling him. But who? Who 
is that? Like it has to be the old Mystery Incorporated. But why were they here? I'll tell you why. Because they took it. They took the briefcase. Perfect. All the pieces of... The Planospheric Disc are ours. I believe it's time to put all of it together. I don't understand. Where are our pieces? If you're watching this, you're probably wondering what's happened to your pieces of the planospheric disk. In a word, you've been scammed, conned, bamboozled. That's three words, Fred, but I think they get the idea. We did this to you. Yeah. And we will be more than happy to tell you how we did it. It was all an elaborate plan masterminded by your very own Freddy. We created Krampus by borrowing Charlie the Haunted Robot and dressing him up in clothes we bought off German gypsies who live in Crystal Gold's Haunted Forest. As for Krampus moving around, he was being remote controlled by Jason Wyatt, who agreed to help for lenience from the mayor on his mother's sentence. Like Jason also helped create an invisible aerosol that was used to turn hair white and make it grow long for added effect. We needed to keep you away from the vault. You following us, following Krampus, was the perfect way to keep you distracted so we could carry out our master plan, breaking into Mr. E's vault. Freddy planted a bug on Brad Child's clothing so that we could get the code to the vault. And once we had that code? We could give it to our operative. Someone with intimate knowledge of Mr. E's lair. Hot dog water. Hot dog water? I still know how to get in touch with her. Like when Velma told Hot Dog Water what we had planned, HDW was in. And while we stole the real pieces, you were stealing fake ones. The real pieces were instead safely hidden with the one person no one would ever suspect. Fred's fake father, the ex-Mayor Jones. My not really my dad dad may have betrayed us once to get the disc pieces, but when he heard what we were planning, he was more than glad to help us take you down. And like Marianne Glearden also agreed to help us after the current mayor offered her lenience on her sentence. She really wants to go back to the seventh grade. I guess I secretly hoped you guys might not try to steal the pieces from us. But I guess I always knew you would. Which leaves me with only one thing left to say. Real mom, real dad, don't expect me home for dinner. Ever. No. Stealing the Quest X was to be a trial run for my greatest creation. The Dragon Battle Suit. So precious was this invention, I trusted only one person to test it. My own daughter. We accident fused the suit to Jenny and has been feeding off of her life force ever since. How did you know? The Dragon registered a heat signature on Mr. E's scanners. But why the obsession with Dynamite? Not the dog, the Quest X inside. With that to power the dragon suit, my Jenny would survive. Now let's see who this ghostly monk really is. George Avocados? That's Avoc... Uh, oh, forget it. That's right, it is me. Yes, finally! I knew you'd be the villain eventually. All right, you got me. And I suppose you're wondering after so many prior Mr. X, why now? Actually, no, not really. We kind of always knew you were evil. Hmm. Okay, fine. Then my tale should not surprise. It all began after I failed in politics. I had no choice but to go into the family business, farming avocados. Everything was going so well until you mystery brats blew up my crops. I then tried my hand at fortune telling. But when that endeavor failed, I fell back on the Avocados legacy of stealing other people's things. I located the Avocados diamond, stolen by my father. Turns out, it actually was disguised as a doorknob. Not on a door in Crystal Cove, but on a door at the Burlington Library. When I found out it was among the artifacts sent here for the production, I took a job as a janitor. I needed everyone to stay clear of the basement to give me time to look. I hid the body of Friar Sarah in a closet and assumed his identity. Knowing this town's gullibility, I knew a ghost story would give me room to hunt. And I would have succeeded, too, if it weren't for Vincent Van Gogh. What? That might be true if they were really aliens, but they are, in fact, 
Traveler O'Flaherty, Sheila O'Flaherty, and Connor O'Flaherty. Uh, usually we all recognize the villain and shout out his name in unison. Yeah, Belm. Mind cluing us in? I know all the criminals in Crystal Cove, and these jerks aren't ringing a bell. Like you had a wanted poster for them on your wall. Oh, please. Nobody ever pays attention to those. What is this? The Old West? Were that it were, boy -o, then perhaps we could have earned an honest living. When I was a wee lad, we couldn't even afford peat for our fire. So I had to lift it. It turned out I was a right good thief. But then I discovered there were things I could steal other than coal. And wouldn't you know it, my kids had an aptitude for the family business as well. We started getting a reputation for our business, and there were our faces splashed all over the universe. Aye, twas then we got the idea for the costumes, because who'd ever say they saw an outer space creature stealing a flat screen television set? I found out about the Blakes purchasing the Pangea. Seemed like it was right up our alley. And we'd have gotten away with it too if it weren't for you footring snappers. Now let's see who's really behind the evil ska music. Rude Boy is actually... Rude Boy? You're alive. But the plane crash 30 years ago... Was an elaborate hoax. Wasn't it, Mr. Rude Boy? Oi, you bloggers got it in for me, right? But yeah, we fight the whole blooming thing. All I ever wanted to do was play Scar and be super rich and super famous. But apparently, it just wasn't in the tarot cards. Maybe the fact that we only had one song had something to do with it. So me and me mates, the Scartastics here, we decided we'd fake our own deaths. Then, we could write the perfect song and return to take the music world by storm! I don't understand, Rude Boy. Why did you wait 30 years to make a comeback? Ah, don't be such a Muppet, Marvel Quinn. We planned to be only gone one year, but writing the perfect song took blooming forever. By the time we cracked it, Scar wasn't popular anymore. But everyone loves the undead. So we began dressing as zombie mobs, riding our undead scooters, and wearing polycarbonite-lined skull masks to hide our identity. So in the end, desperate for success, Rude Boy and the Scottastics unleashed a dancing plague on the world, using an enharmonic chord with special frequencies designed to induce post-hypnotic suggestion to sell their music. Just as I thought, but didn't say. Dance them away, Sheriff. Now let's see who the gluten demon really is. Francis Lee Jackson. Not a big surprise after the work that Kachinga Daphne and I did. Francis Lee's cooking show wasn't taped before a live audience. She made the tape herself, allowing her to work the special effects of adding in the gluten demon during editing. Plus, her stage name is Francis Lee Jackson, but her birth certificate lists her as Agatha Juniper Schollenheimer. As AJS, she signed those manifests. She rented that secret warehouse. And she has a strange food allergy to all things healthy, which is why she reacted to Kachinga salad lunch so insanely. The only thing we don't know is why. Oh, y'all, it is so simple. I needed a big comeback. After my cornbread recipe was revealed to have no corn in it, I was ruined. Ruined! My only chance was to open my own bakery where I could serve up my new breakout dish. The double bacon mayonnaise butter stuffed pasta surprise with buttered bread sauce. Any cook worth their kosher sea salt knows the legend of the gluten demon. I dressed up like that and started destroying every restaurant in town so there'd be no competition when I opened mine. And I would have done it too. Been a huge success again if it weren't for all y'all bread-hating health fanatics. The librarian? Like, seriously? But you're not even British! <laughs> I'm so confused. Why? It's simple, really. You spend a life reading about other people's exciting adventures and never, never, never have one of your own. It's awful. I'm so lonely. Jinkies? How did I miss that one? I never really had any friends growing up. All I had were my books. For years, I stayed in my room and read about incredible adventures, other people's adventures. Then, I got an idea. I was going to become the Dandy Highwayman. 
I was going to be the king of adventures and adored by women everywhere. I studied how to do an English accent. I incorporated a motorcycle helmet into my costume's hat and practiced my motorcycle skills for hours and hours. Then I discovered something unimaginable. The key to a woman's total admiration and devotion. All you have to do is pay attention to them when they're talking. Crazy, isn't it? It wasn't until I started to moderate the book club that I learned how to listen. From there, I actually became interested in what women had to say. Before long, I was fully engaged in their desires and feelings. I was living the dream. And I would have gotten away with it if it weren't for you meddling romance killers. Huh? Well, if you're so smart, then who am I really? You're one of the most heartless criminals Mystery Inc. has ever faced. Aren't you, Dad? Ow! It's not a mask, you imbecile. I had plastic surgery to look like you. You would have spotted a mask too quickly. I don't know what you think you were doing. You're supposed to be my father. But how could you try to impersonate me when you know absolutely nothing about me? If he's Brad, that makes you Fred's sneaky criminal mom, Judy. Ouch! Watch it! I had plastic surgery, too. I know. Brad Childs and Judy Reeves? <laughs> but, like, why? Yeah, why? For the treasure. What else? It was the genius mind of Professor Pericles that thought up the whole plan, wasn't it, Judy? That's right, Brad. While we went under the knife, Professor Pericles had Mr. E arrange for the Crystal Cove studio to be changed into an exact replica of the town. Except more end-of-the-world-ish, obviously. I hate to be the one to point this out, but that's just crazy. Is it, Velma? Or is it so brilliant you cannot begin to fathom its true genius? Professor Pericles? You failed, Professor. You'll never get your filthy talons on this disc. On the contrary, Frederick. You are going to hand it over to me, along with my associates, your dear parents. Or else, I will destroy the one thing you care about most. Zoinks! <laughs> Fine. You win. Take it. Excellent. Auf Wiedersehen. You beautiful kinder. Now, let's see who this monstrous freak really is. It's... it's... who is that? If I'm not mistaken, it's El Aguirre, the captain of the Spanish Conquistadors. El Aguirre? But why? La pura verdad. The truth is simple. I did not want you to discover how to destroy the evil entity buried deep beneath Crystal Cove in its Caja Demonio. Like, that doesn't make any sense. I thought you'd be the first person who'd want that thing destroyed. No! Do you not see? If you destroy the entity, myself and my men will be set free from this endless curse. We should never be set free. We must pay for all the horrible atrocities we committed while in service to the entity. Aww. I can still hear their screaming. All the screams of the innocent ones. No! No! We must pay! Forever! We can never be set free! Okay, like the old Spanish dude is a little loco in the cabeza. It's time to see who this ancient jade mask-wearing weirdo really is. Professor Andalusosa! Enrique! It was staring us in the face all along. When the men in the village thought I was my mom, it was clear that no one was able to forget her over all these years. Then there were the vines. This plant isn't native to the Yucatan. Only someone with a background in gardening could have cultivated it and made it grow so quickly. Professor Andalusosa's first job was as a gardener. Finally, the vines on the boat had been tied to the wheel. The boat had been scuttled to make it look like the professor had been attacked. But why, Enrique? For love. Angie, when you left me that summer decades ago, you took my heart with you. Every night since I have dreamed of you. When you called asking about the heart of the Jaguar, I knew it was my only chance to lure you back and find out if you still cared for me. So you decided to test her love by crushing her with fast-growing killer plants. Wow. That's exactly what I would have done. Oh, Freddy. That's so romantic. In your usual unique kind of way. And I would have gotten away with it, too, if... <sighs> 
If you had really loved me.